Hi, and welcome to Essentials for Therapists, a simple guide to creating your professional website. This is a quick video to talk you through uh, what's included and just give you some examples of how I would go about doing it myself. So the guide you download has a little intro, um, and the whole point is about making it simple and accessible. Um, a lot of people, they decide to use things like Wix and Squarespace because they seem easy at the time, but then they get quite limited. Um, so I normally suggest if you can, buy your domain, get your hosting and use WordPress. And if you do that, it really sets you up for a much more successful and kind of longer lasting future. So my recommendation is actually to use namecheat.com and I'll just show you what that looks like. This is basically where you buy the name or kind of the address of your website. Um, they will do a very similar thing and you'd be looking somewhere between five and 10 pounds a year. Uh, so if we just do, um, I'm just gonna do it with the obtherapy.com to see if that's available. You would search for it. And then it's always gonna give you other options. So things like .health, .london, etc. I'd advise to avoid using these weird extensions and either go for a .com or a .co.uk. Um, .co.uk is if you're based in the UK and .com can be if you're based in America or any, anywhere in the world. Um, and you can even get uh, basically by both. So in my case, the .com would redirect to the .co.uk. Uh, you can see here that it's about £9 a year, renews at £12. And that's all you'd have to pay to kind of own that destination, to own that name. I'm just going to see quickly if the .co.uk is also available. And that is, yeah, £5.30. So all in, you're talking under £15 a year if you choose to have both, or under £10 a year if you choose to have one of them. Um, and that really is about you establishing your brand. Um, normally, I suggest keeping it short and simple. Um, if you've got a very memorable name or something that you really want to be part of your marketing, part of your branding for your practice, maybe include that in the domain. Uh, but for a lot of people, it might just be their name or maybe their name in the word therapy or the word counselling. We want to keep it as short as possible. So my actual website itself is just theoruby.com. And it's just really nice, short, easy to remember. It kind of, it works well when you're adding it on business cards or telling people about it. Really, you want something that's maybe under 10 characters, quite easy for you to say and quite memorable where possible. Um, if you're a specialist and, for example, I work with the binge eating therapist, uh, your menopause therapist and a few others that specialise in an area, it might be worth having that as your domain. Otherwise, yeah, your name is normally a good shout. So again, step one, go to something like namechip.com and buy your domain. So once you've got your domain or your address, then you think about your hosting. So this is how you keep it running. This is like the engine that runs behind it. Um, I offer therapist hosting myself. That includes the hosting, uh, some software, some security, and some hosting support. Um, however, if you want to look at other places, I'd really recommend uh, having it having the hosting based in the country you're in. I'm in the UK, and it's really worth having a server that's based in the UK. Um, you'll see lots of cheap deals being advertised online but then your, your information might be sent outside of the country you're in. So it's, it's really not a good idea. Um, again, you can get in touch for a hosting quote. Otherwise, my recommendation is normally to use something like SiteGround. Um, you wouldn't need any of the advanced hosting. You can just go with the basic one. Um, if you've got a small practice site, you haven't got any complicated bits on it. That's a good, really good starting point. Um, but if you do want to have a chat, just get in touch and we can discuss anything from your website, your hosting, your SEO, digital marketing, looking at things like social media, your branding, etc., and then training if you wanna do things for yourself. Um, so I'm just gonna go back now and look at part three. So you've got your address, you've got your hosting, which is the engine, and then you wanna think about the actual platform that you build on. There's many different platforms. Uh, my favorite is WordPress, it's wordpress.org. Um, it's open source software, it's very, very flexible and it can grow with you. Um, there is a little bit of a learning curve to get set up, uh, but obviously I, I can give you a hand with that. There's lots of tutorials online. 
Um, it's a very small bar barrier considering the benefits you get. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So this is actually the back end of my website. I'm going to go into the TheraSummit page to give you an example. And I'm using a tool called Elementor to build on the site. So it means it's quite easy. It's a very visual way of building websites. You would click on the right and edit on the left. So if you wanted to change any of your text, it's just a case of clicking on the right and then putting in whatever you need here. And you can see what's typed on the, le on the left populates over here. It works the same for images, for video, text, buttons. Um, it's very, very intuitive. And normally you'll only be dealing with this first tab here that's content. So depending on what you want, um, again, generally it's gonna be heading, image, text editor. So these three. Um, and again, I offer lots of training. I've got lots of videos online of how to do this. And as you grow and you develop, you can add more things. And the benefit of WordPress is you don't have those pricing structures like Wix and Squarespace. So if you want to add videos or Calendly or anything else, you don't have to pay more every single month in order to do that. Um, let's have a little look. So you can see as I scroll down, as I hover, it's highlighting the things I want to update. You click on that thing on the right, and then you can change that on the left. So if you update your LinkedIn or if you have a new social media channel, it can take seconds to update. Uh, and the benefit is because you're building it yourself, you're not using a theme or a, uh, like a preset template, it's very, very flexible. So you don't like the size of it, you move it around. Um, and I'll go to more into that in a minute, but I just wanted to show you some of the benefits of using WordPress and Elementor. Just as an example, um, let's have a look. So these, these titles, click on them click in here you can change what it is if you wanted to you can change anything to do with the spacing the text um, there really is it's kind of endless of what you can do with it so we go and put that back and I'm going to go to the next section so now we're thinking about creating your content um, the kind of fundamentals you don't want to have a, a single page it's not good for SEO it's not good for the user um, a lot of people like to be able to travel around a site. So you have, as a bare minimum, the home page to introduce your practice, the about page to show your qualifications, maybe um, where you've worked in the past or a bit about the type of therapy that you offer. And then finally a contact page, which is a form and a way for them to get in touch with you. Uh, it might include things like your prices or kind of the, the process to engage with your practice. Um, that would be what I consider the most simple. And then over time, you can add in things like FAQ pages, blog, therapies pages. This can be a single therapies page, which has a list of the types of counselling. Or as you grow, it can, you can have a sub page per therapy type. Um, one of my clients has given me uh, authority to share their website now. I'm just going to show you an example. So this is your time to talk. Uh, they're a relationship and sex therapy website, and it's quite simplistic. Um, and they try and avoid using real life photos. They use these, these caricatures instead. Um, but you'll notice here when it says therapies offered, they've broken down each type of therapy into a separate page. They're very simple. Um, they don't have to, they all ideally want to look quite similar with different content, maybe with a different image. So you can see this one here, relationship therapy, you get the intro, a bit more information, how we can help and the option for low cost. Then if you go to psychosexual, again, same, it's the same kind of idea, but you're really tailoring the content for the client. So you're trying to think about the problem the client has and make sure the words on the page match with that as well. Um, but this is really, really good for SEO. So having these dedicated pages is a much better way of you being able to be found on Google and making sure you're as targeted and relevant as possible for your clients. As your practice builds, if you choose to, and you have a team, you can, for example, have a team page where you can break down the people that you work with. You could have potential locations if you're having therapists in, say, different locations. Uh, you could offer supervision, have a page for that. Fees, your blogs, and then obviously your contact. 
there's other things as well you could do um anything you've been in the media or maybe a shop if you're selling a book or a product uh anyone you're associated with it really can grow with you and the reason why i always say wordpress is a good starting point is because it's just something you can build over time for example my website started off as a three page site and now i've got probably 50 60 different pages this is mostly blogs and articles so i have resources that answer people's questions in the same way you could create maybe once a month create a piece of content around a particular challenge a client has and then that not only helps the client but it helps your website grow online and boost your seo um, i won't go into it too much but each page ranks individually so if you create a page on um, anxiety techniques for example that will rank separately from your home page so having these independent blogs is a really nice way to boost your own website so this for example is a guide I've created on how you can grow your therapy practice it's separate from the therapy summit page the Thera summit page but it really gives you some more information it, it gives your clients another way to engage with you and again see this is a the Thera summit that's good for SEO it's good for the client it's mutually beneficial. So really the action here is to plan out any additional pages, um, try not to overwhelm yourself at the beginning, and you can have a look at other therapists in your niche or in your area to get an idea of what's working for them. Um, and you'd normally start with a title, maybe a, a reflective image and a short bit of text, and then you can think about how to grow that over time. Then the next step is the design. I've already touched on Elementor. I'm just going to quickly go back in and show you some uh, good use cases of it. So Elementor at the moment is the number one tool that's being used to make websites. Uh, WordPress owns about 40% of the market share for all websites uh, that are built currently. And Elementor is being used by more than 7 million people at the moment. Um, obviously these things change, um, but yeah, it's just generally a good recommendation but it's always worth you doing your own research as well, if you're not too sure. It's just, this is my, my go-to option. Um, so this is actually an SEO guide for therapists. And again, as you hover, you can see all these things are being updated. Um, let's go and give you an example. So if you wanted to change some deliverables, you would click on the right, and you can easily just edit on the left. And in two seconds I've updated it when you're finished you just hit the large pink icon that says publish um, and what you can do as well which I love and this is very very valuable if there's a style that you like so you put together a section that works for your brand and it's it's nice and aesthetically pleasing you can right mouse click and duplicate and then you can use it somewhere else and update it um, and that's the best way to have consistency across your website also, when you're looking at things like tablet and mobile, you can easily change how it looks. Uh, so all websites should be mobile responsive. Uh, around 50% of the internet now use uh, mobile phones. The amount of tablets being used is decreasing every year. However, you obviously want to make sure it looks good on iPads and Samsung tablets as well. Um, but you can see this is a second a larger two column design um, and then if I go back this is a, a shorter slimmer tablet view that works in that dimension everything is a little bit narrower and then if you go into mobile you can see it's a single column and the idea is that as someone's scrolling everything looks nice there's you keep a bit of padding you make it um, easy to read and accessible uh, also making sure that things like the buttons are big enough for them to click on uh, everything that you want to explain is visible uh, for example there they can actually click in and see that video so mobile responsiveness is is kind of a necessity now and it's something that you should really spend a little bit of time to make sure you get it right 
So the next thing is looking at high quality images. Um, you can use things like Canva, um, Adobe Stock, Shutterstock. There's loads of image libraries online. Um, you can't download straight from Google because of copyright. So you, you do want to be a bit careful when you're using images, making sure that you are able to add them to your site. I'm just going to give you a quick example. So this is a library I use called um, Deposit Photos. And generally for your website, you want to have a theme. So whether you're using kind of cartoons, illustrations, real life photos. Um, one thing I would say is there's a lot of websites that use forests, mountains, beaches, and those kind of nature themes. Um, so if you are going to go with one of those themes, really try and make sure that your website stands out. Um, but yeah, there are so many that it's not my, my go-to recommendation. So if you like a style in particular, if you click on that style, they'll give you similar images. Um, so then you can have each of each page of your site would have a similar image. So they all kind of match up. Um, but they're a little bit different so that the, the client or the supervisee would actually know what the page is about. Normally you have to pay a small amount, something between two and five pounds for these. There are royalty free ones that are completely free. However, they've been used in many more places. I'll just give you an example. So pexels.com is completely free. However, um, if we go in, they're going to be a little bit more generic. There's going to be less choice. Um, and you're going to find that they're used in many, many kind of um, shopping websites, cheaper websites, uh, social media posts, those kind of things. So for the actual core images for your website, it's normally worth paying a little bit for it just so that they're unique and they stand out. Then um, you want to make sure that they're loading fast. So if you are using large images, make sure that they're small enough, um, they're compressed enough that they'll load on your site. I'm actually going to go and give you a